Welcome back. Uh, normally, I would do a, a news video uh, and and discuss things. This this is this is major. So uh, we knew that the Chicago Blackhawks were having an investigation. Now, in the beginning, it looked like this was going to be an investigation just to say everything's okay. So it came out that Brad Aldrich uh, had made sexual advances towards players within the organization. There was sexual assault allegations, and on May 23rd of 2010, the team's upper management had a meeting about this, and they did nothing. Uh, coming out of this meeting, basically the agreement was, so we'll just leave it as it is then. And it was a matter of, this was a team that was in the midst of a run to their first Stanley Cup, and they really didn't want to ruin that. So even though careers are being ruined and criminal activities going on, we're, we're going to just go straight ahead with this I yeah anyways and and the interesting thing is we've been told the whole way along this is not news but the thing is when it was Nick Boynton and Brent Sopel coming forward you could write that off and go that's eh, hearsay uh, they're, they're just talking they don't know what they're talking about they weren't longtime Blackhawks there are now questions we need to circle back and ask of players who've come out and said hey we didn't know anything until the summer after Brad Aldrich was out of the organization and that's been the company line was that after he left the organization, then they became aware. That's been the party line. And what this investigation showed was that is absolutely incorrect. It is a bold-faced lie that has come from people in upper management. And it feels like it's, it's quite likely players are misremembering when they're saying, well, we didn't know until the summer. And it doesn't seem like something that you wouldn't remember finding out during your run to the Stanley Cup. It doesn't seem like something you would be, oh, right, yeah, that was that was during the conference final, or that was just before the finals. No. So, John McDonough, the president of the team, was present at this meeting. Stan Bowman, the GM, was present at this meeting. Joel Quenville, the coach, was present at this meeting. Jay Blunk, Kevin Sheveldayoff, Kevin Sheveldayoff being an assistant GM at the time, is now the general manager of the Winnipeg Jets. Joel Quenville, of course, has moved on and become the head coach for the Florida Panthers. How long they stay in those roles, we'll see. But what this basically says is they were present and they agreed to keep their mouth shut and do nothing. Nothing. And this went on for weeks. This was a player who was on the Blackhawks, uh, who was who was made this allegation and and started this 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 train running, and. Nothing was done to protect the player. You don't want to ruin your run to the Stanley Cup, do you? There were 139 witnesses interviewed. It, it definite, I will say this for the Blackhawks. We have said the whole way through, this could absolutely be a snow job where they're pretending it's a sham, it's not a real investigation. CEO Danny Wirtz today deserves some credit. Now, the team initially tried to deny this, dismiss this, and run people out of money so that it would go away. And I don't think you can cover that uh, completely and, and say, well, that's forgotten now because they got it right eventually. This should have been handled right the first time. The fact that they said this was investigated and there was no merit initially, that's pretty damning now, isn't it? That means that clearly it wasn't a very in-depth investigation and what they did this time was, and it absolutely found fault. Ages after this stuff has come out, I want to also say that Rick Westhead of TSN has been reporting on this diligently for a long time. And he never once backed off on it. Um, I've, I've seen some of the things said about him online. And I, you know, I, I, there are fans who will defend their team. And, and it's mostly in, in the realm of Blackhawk fans that were upset with him for continuing to report on this because it... To them, seemed like it was it was a hack job, and it was he was he was just after the Blackhawks and just leave him alone, find something else to talk about. Aren't we glad he didn't? So, skills coach Paul Vincent is the one who went to Rick Westhead initially, apparently, and has been very forthcoming, or at the very least, he's been very forthcoming and very good at helping to provide information about what was going on then. And not enough can be said for Brent Sopel, Nick Boynton, and any other player who has come forward, whether they came forward and had their name attached to it, or it was anonymous, whether they were anonymous source or they were named, there are players who came forward and said, yeah, everybody in the room knew. Everybody in the dressing room knew what had happened.
Now, there are still those allegations that there were members of the Blackhawks that taunted the victim and made fun of the victim and made a joke out of the whole thing. And so I think what we're seeing today is the start of finding out just how far this goes. And I think now we're just dealing with the management side, and I think the player side is going to come out after. Because now we know that there was this meeting May 23rd. I do not buy for a second that Joel Quenville left this meeting and didn't speak to anybody on the bench, didn't speak to anybody at a practice, that it never came out of his mouth once to any of the players. I cannot believe what's going on here. So um, the thing too is that after this meeting and before he leaves the organization, he made sexual advances on a 22-year-old NHL intern. This is why he should have been fired immediately and the police should have been brought in. Immediately. Not later, immediately. You find this out. You don't sit down and have a meeting. You 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 get you get the police involved. You bring Brad, Brad Aldrich into a, into an office and you say, "Dude, you're out of here. You're fired." And by the way, the police are waiting outside. He went on. He also harmed a high school student after this took place. That high school student has been been suing the Blackhawks. And again, to Danny Wirt's credit, to the Blackhawks' credit, they are trying to reach a settlement with both the former Blackhawk player who is still un, unnamed, he's still John Doe, and the Michigan high school player as well. I don't think this is necessarily the end of this, though. Stan Bowman has resigned. He is gone. He is out as general manager, and he has started to talk. So I think he has to be out of the U.S. Olympics. He's been named the, the U.S. Olympic GM. I, there's no way the U.S. Olympics retain him now as general manager, so that's going to have to change. Um, Bowman recalls Quenville. So this board, I honestly, I've been just writing notes as all this comes out. Bowman recall, recalls Joel Quenville saying it was hard for them to get to where they were, meaning where the Hawks were in the playoffs at this time, late May of 2010, before they've won a single Stanley Cup, and that they couldn't deal with the issue now. So it's, we're doing really well. I really, I don't want to deal with this right now. Uh, and Quenville also appeared angry and concerned during the meeting about upsetting team chemistry. Team's playing really well. Everybody's, this is working really well. If this comes out right now, we have a big press conference. We fire this guy. This guy ends up, you know, being charged. It could really throw the team off. It could really harm our playoff run. And we haven't had a Stanley Cup yet. So, and and I, I think that is just awful. Absolutely awful. Uh, McDonough said the Blackhawks might not make it this far again. And they needed to think about when to handle this issue. When do you handle it? There, nobody was debating that anything bad had happened. Nobody's debating that Brad Aldrich wasn't guilty as hell. Nobody is debating any of it. They're just saying, so this happened. It's criminal. But we're doing really well. Things are things are going well for us. We could win the Stanley Cup. We don't want to lose the Stanley Cup. It's more important. So what they're telling that player is, eh, it sucks that happened to you, man. But uh, I will I will link in the description for this video the 172-page report. The entire report has been publicized. And Danny Wirtz has read it, and he says it was difficult and disturbing to read. And no executive from 2010, from when this took place, will be part of the organization any longer. So for Bowman to resign, he resigned before he got fired. Um, and Senior Vice President Al McIsaac is out as well. He was part of the Chicago organization beyond 20 years. Uh, so Kyle Davidson is the interim GM for the Chicago Blackhawks right now. Good luck. You have a team that is absolutely a disaster on the ice, and now off the ice? I, Again, they initially tried to, des to deny and discredit all this reporting. Now we find out that everything that's been reported absolutely happened. The only thing that's left out that I haven't seen yet is that Brad Aldrich left the organization and the word has been that they gave him a letter of recommendation for his next job. That is the only thing that I think is still out there as an unknown. But now that the rest of it has been proven after they denied, 
that gets kind of kind of murky, doesn't it? Gets kind of tough. Um, so yeah, they're they're trying to reach a settlement. Uh, Davidson in. I think I've I think I've got everything so far, and there's going to be more. Does Kevin Sheveldayoff stay as the GM of the Winnipeg Jets? I don't see how he can. Does Joel Quenville stick around as the coach of the Florida Panthers? I know they're six and zero. I don't see how he can. I just don't see it. And Quenville has come out and stated he knew the summer, so he didn't know. Multiple witnesses have him in this room at this meeting. Multiple people have talked about his attitude during this meeting and how he felt that it was going to disturb the team's chemistry and he didn't want to deal with it right now. But he's saying he doesn't remember it that way. That's not that's not what happened. There's going to be a lot of fallout from this. And that's 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 what has been said the whole way through. And I haven't talked about it as much as I maybe wanted to. Because I wanted to wait until the report was made public. Now we can have the discussion. Which players knew? When Jonathan Tabes came out last year and said, hey, none of us knew anything, that can't be true. It, it can't be true because players have come forward and said we knew and everybody in that locker room knew. Jokes were made about that player having been assaulted by Brad Aldrich. This goes so much further. And I, I really think this is the start. I, I think the, the publication of, of this finding is the start. I, I love hockey. I love reporting on hockey every day. Um, I, I love all the skill plays. I love the great goaltending, the great saves. It's the ugly underbelly that can be tough to report on. And this is part of it. And it's there. And for today, uh, we're talking about Chicago. But again, there are names on this board that are now members of other organizations. There are players from that 2010 team who have moved on to other organizations, who have retired, who have jobs in, in hockey. There are broadcasters who are part of that 2010 team. This is the start. It's the start. I don't believe it's the finish. So, that being said, um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Um, obviously not wearing a Chicago jersey for this. I didn't feel like that would be uh, appropriate uh, at this time. It, it just didn't. I, I wasn't even all that certain I'd use the Chicago logo on the board, but I thought, well, I, I might as well, because it is their organization. This is this is on that organization. It It's tough. It's tough. Because clearly this was this was something that if, if Aldrich does this in October, maybe they fire him and, and, and just, you know, he's out of there. But because of when it happened, the team said, we're doing really well. Joel Quenville says, we're doing really well. I don't want to upset team chemistry. And then that puts it on the victim, right? Why did you have to say anything? We're doing really well. Can, can you just wait? Can you just keep your mouth shut? We'll see how things go. Because eventually I think the John Doe player will come forward. Attach his name to it. And I, I think we'll hear what he went through. And I think that's when player names start getting attached. Because if players come out now and they still say, yeah, we didn't know anything. It'd be really tough not to come forward and go, oh, they knew. They knew. And they talked about it. So we'll see what happens. Uh, let me know your thoughts, though. And again, uh, it's it's something that I know uh, on our, our Discord. I know uh, there are Hawks fans who've, who've, since all this investigation was coming out and all this information started leaking out, um, that have said it's hard to be a Hawks fan with all that going on. Totally understood. If if this was something in Vancouver, it, it'd be tough for me to continue as a Canuck fan. Absolutely, yes. So we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts. And, uh, you know, my thoughts are absolutely with the, the player that's the victim in this case, the high school student as well, and to the NHL intern and to anybody else who was harmed by Brad Aldrich in his time. Because we know of the players who've come forward. We don't know about the ones that don't. And there are always ones that don't. 
So, all right. That being said, uh, thank you guys so much for, for your time. Uh, I hope I, I attach the, the proper amount of gravitas to the, the, the information on the board because um, it's, it's serious. Uh, thank you guys so much, though, for all your support, and uh, I will talk to you again soon.